yesterday, that 5-0 defeat to Liverpool for Manchester United, for me, was the point where I decided, myself personally, that I, I don't think Solskjaer can continue. Obviously, a lot of you have been there for a long time. Everyone's entitled to their own opinions and how they get to them. That's fine. I'm not here to divide on that. But what I'm here to talk about is what happens next. What happens if or when Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is sacked? I'm hearing Manchester United aren't planning for it. Well, I'm going to talk about it here on United People's TV. Going to be taking a look at the contenders who could come in to replace Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Now, Fabrizio Romano has said that there has been no meeting in Manchester United's boardroom just yet. But even since recording this video only like an hour ago, we're seeing reports coming out from The Guardian from Jamie Jackson saying that Richard Arnold, Manchester United's director now, has cancelled all of his meetings on Monday to hold an emergency meeting with Joel Glazer five hours behind in the US of A. Will we be seeing some movement today? I thought we could rule it out. Maybe you can't. And we've also seen Romano saying that Conte would be interested in the job, that Zinedine Zidane would be interested in the job, but neither of them have been contacted just yet. I think things are going to change quickly in terms of that. But this video, I'm going to run through everything. So make sure you please drop a like on the video. Subscribe to United People's TV, but let's take a look at what could happen next under Solskjaer because if I'm going to go and say Solskjaer out, I have a responsibility to take a look at what could come next. And here are the options. Now, the main name being banded around is Antonio Conte. <clears throat> and what I'm going to do in this video is look at the managerial history of each candidate, I'm going to take a look at their records there, and also really the style that they're known and associated with playing in their teams. So with Conte, you look at him, I mean, his record, he kind of speaks for itself. He's managed in Italy all of his career, apart from Chelsea, where he won the Premier League with Chelsea. He won the Serie A three times with Juventus, the Super Cup as well. He won the FA Cup with Chelsea, went back and he won Serie A last year with Inter Milan. And his record, as I said, it speaks for itself. Antonio Conte, whether you like him or whether you don't like him, he does have a fantastic overall record. And last year, with Lukaku, with um, Christian Eriksen, with Ashley Young, with all the players he had in that Inter Milan team, they stormed Serie A. Now, we all know what Conte plays with. He plays with a 3-5-2. <clears throat> Let's have a look at the formation here from last year with Inter Milan, with Skriniar, De Vrij, and Godin in the middle. You've got Brozovic. And then up front, you've got Lukaku and Martinez. He always plays with wing-backs. It's what... Conte did with Chelsea. It's what Conte did with a, uh, Inter Milan. They play with wing backs. They play with 3 5 2 or a 5 3 2, no matter what you want to call it. That's how they get their width. Not really playing with wingers. And for Manchester United, given we've got Marcus Rashford and Jaden Sancho, this is why it's so crucial for United to get this appointment right. We need someone who can come in and follow the foundations for this style that Solskjaer's brought in. If, even if he hasn't been able to take it to the elite level that it's going towards, Conte jars on that. Conte is a man who comes into a club for a few years and he leaves. Obviously, he fell out with the owners at Inter over a lack of investment and the players being sold. Uh, and he fell out with Chelsea, but everyone falls out with Roman Abramovich. That's standard. Conte, what's your opinion on Conte? As I said, in terms of the options that we've got, his CV, it speaks for itself. Titles in Italy, title in the Premier League. He has experience doing it in England. But would you be happy with the, the style of play that Conte would come in with? Wingbacks, who would that be? Like Tellez or Shaw and Wan-Bissaka? Who would play? What would happen with Sancho? There's lots of questions with Conte. It's a different sort of style. And that's why I think people have reservations about him. But you let me know what you think about Conte in the comments below. And the second name on the list is Zinedine Zidane. Zidane and Conte both out of management jobs at the moment. And Zidane, we all know what he did at Real Madrid. Real Madrid, he came through the younger team, he went into the senior team, and he was at the helm when they dominated the Champions League. <clears throat> if Ronaldo is Mr. Champions League, if Iran is Mr. Champions League, Zidane is Mr. Champions League. There, 2015 to 2018, three in a row, two La Liga titles, two Super Cup titles, two FIFA Club World Cups. Zidane was part of a team, and it's a big question that's asked about Zidane. Is he just a person who walked into that Real Madrid team at its peak with Ronaldo at his peak with Varane at his peak with Cruz at his peak with Modric at his peak with Ramos still being Ramos with Bale scoring Champions League finals at least was he just the right man at the right time for that squad a lot of questions are asked about that in terms of a style here you can see a formation that Dinadine Zidane played in the Champions League final it's a 4-3-3 a fluid 4-3-3 Ronaldo on the left Bale on the right Benz that team's ridiculous Benzema up front Marcelo, Ramos, Pepe and Carvajal. No wonder they dominated so much. Jeez. But 
Zinedine Zidane typically plays a 4-3-3. And if you're looking at a Manchester United and the system that we're building towards, it suits Zidane certainly a lot more on paper than it suits Antonio Conte. With that formation, you can imagine Ronaldo playing as a central role with Rashford on the left, Sancho on the right. It's the holding midfielder that we don't have. Will that change in January? We don't know that. Ideally, we were going to move to this 4-3-3 this season, but we haven't seen that. And now it's come. It's not even November time and we're talking about a new manager. So it goes to show that things are just not working out for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. But you've got Antonio Conte there, a seasoned veteran, a proper experienced manager, a bit like... Louis van Gaal, and you could certainly argue quite a lot like Jose Mourinho, a hitman who comes into a squad that needs re rejuvenating the, uh, with, a, with a team that's hungry for titles, and he can deliver it, and he has delivered it in two different countries. Will that be what United need next? On the other hand, you've got Zinedine Zidane, who had that three, four year of total dominance at Real Madrid, and has sort of, you know, that's that's been him so far. Was it just the fact that he had all the best players in the world, or is Zidane also a fantastic coach too? What's your reservations and questions about both of those? But a third candidate that we have to talk about is, of course, I think anyway, Eric Ten Hag, who has done nothing short of a fantastic job at Ajax. Ajax in 2018-19, when they had that team, they got to the Champions League semi-finals under Ten Hag. They were incredible to watch, and they still are, but so much has changed in those few years. Obviously, all the players that have left, Van der Beek, we know about Donny, um, you've got Frankie de Jong, you've got Matthias de Ligt, and plenty of others in between, Ziyech. But Ajax have always stayed true to themselves under Eric Ten Hag. Taking a look at his managerial experience, it's the shortest, of course it's the shortest. He, he, he managed in Holland, went to Bayern Munich, second team, and got his chance at Utrecht, took it, and then was given the job at Ajax. And since then, he's won the title twice, won the League Cup twice, and he placed fourth on the men's best coach list. And with the style of Eric Ten Hag. It has sort of developed and ad adopted in terms of the, the, the modern game, but it's quite typically a 4-2-3-1, which of course Manchester United fans will all be too familiar with. But it's not just a 4-2-3-1 as we know it. It's a far more fluid 4-2-3-1. Players are aggressive, out of possession. Ajax play with real intensity. For sure they play with intensity. So effectively what we've got here, we've got the three main candidates at this particular moment in time. We're talking about Conte. We're talking about Zidane and we're talking about Ten Hag. With Conte, he's available now. He's someone who could come in right now and make a difference. With Zidane, he's someone who could come in right now and make a difference. Both of them out of a job, both of them can be contacted straight away. Eric Ten Hag, for a lot of United fans, maybe he's going to be top of that list. But he, I believe this season, he's already said that he's not going to do anything until the summer. And Barcelona is far more likely to be able to get Eric Ten Hag to Manchester United because of Johan Cruyff being Ten Hag's inspiration and the links between Ajax and Barca. I don't need to explain all that to you. You know that. So Ten Hag might not even be an option. For me, looking at it, I'm, I, I'm basically going to keep my opinion out of this video. What I'm just presenting to you are the facts. The facts of Conte, what he's won in his career, what his, what his style of play is, what he, what he would bring to Manchester United. I would look at... Um, Zinedine Zidane, what he's done in his career. What, how, how could he play at Manchester United? And Eric Ten Hag as well. Maybe I'll do more in-depth videos looking at each manager in particular and what maybe their formation would be at Manchester United. I think that would probably be a good idea. I'll do that. Speaking to myself now. But what's your opinion on what comes next? As I said, that for me is the biggest fear I've got. That after Ole Gunnar Solskjaer... What, the, and that's why Antonio Conte does scare me because I think it will be a massive switch from where we were going towards with the players that we've been buying towards a certain system to then just go and switch it all of a sudden to a 3-5-2. Yeah, we've got the players in there, but we haven't been building towards that. Is that something that we could do and adapt to? Maybe maybe we could. Of course, we've got a fantastic squad of players. so You can't rule anything out. And at this point, I don't want to rule anything out. I can't rule anything out. I've been a, a massive supporter of Solskjaer and things just haven't worked out. So I think it would be wrong of me to completely and utterly dismiss. My own opinion is, yeah, I don't think I'd like Conte. I said I'd keep out the video, but there you go. Just dropped it in there. Well done, Sam. But that's the sort of facts of the styles of management from Conte, from Zidane, and from Ten Hag. In terms of experience, no one comes close to Antonio Conte. But given that so many United fans fell out of love with the club under Mourinho, is that really going to be the best option to go back into bed with someone like Conte? You let me know what you think in, in the comments below. Zidane, again, if he can replicate that sort of form that he showed with that Real Madrid team, my God, he could be—he is incredible. But was that just part of one of the greatest teams ever? 
that he was managing. A bit like Guardiola and Barcelona back in the day. You let me know what you think about that. And Ten Hag, do you think there's any chance that he would or could leave Ajax before the end of the season? Please let me know what you think in the comments below because this is now going to be a conversation that we have to all do together. Take a look at all the managers. Take a look at options because look, I'm, I'm hearing that Manchester United aren't really getting in contact with anyone or aren't really planning for the future. But I don't care what Man United are doing. I'm doing it. As I said, if, I, if, I've, if I've been strong enough in my own opinion to say that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer should be sacked, then I have to take a look at what could come next because we can't just walk into it blind. So let me know what you think about Everything I've said in this video, everything I've showed you, you let me know everything in the comments below. As always, please, if you would, drop a like on the video and subscribe to United People's TV if you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think.